Miss Collier explains adding and subtracting decimals. Today, our learning intentions are to understand that when we add and subtract decimals, we might need to include some additional zeros after the decimal place and to be able to add and subtract decimals. We will know we are successful when we can add and subtract decimals. Now we're going to look at decimals and we're going to start with addition and subtraction of decimals, which should be kind of like a recap. When we add and subtract decimals, it follows the exact same procedure as when we add and subtract whole numbers. When we're adding and subtracting whole numbers, we just line up the place values. You might have thought if you were told to add 621 plus 32 that you should line up the last number. This is technically true, but I don't want you to think about it like the last number, but rather that you were lining up the ones place. Then decimals will be exactly the same. Here's our place value chart. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, and so on as we get bigger. And then in our decimals, we have tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths. It's really important that you know these place values of decimals. But as long as we line up all the place values of each number, we can just add and subtract as normal. Here are two different addition sums. Look, they look basically exactly the same. The only difference here is that this has a line of decimals. But as you can see, they follow the same procedure. It's all lined up, so nothing changes with decimals except that there's a line of decimals. Decimals are everywhere in everyday life and I'm sure you could think of some. Accountants, financial planners, auditors are some of the financial professions for whom adding and subtracting decimals is an everyday calculation. If you're doing any job with money, you're going to be using decimals a lot. Let's go over the key ideas. When we're adding or subtracting decimals, just like whole numbers, we need to line up the place value. But the pretty easy thing with decimals is that they all have a decimal point. So the easiest way is just to line the decimals up in a row. If all our decimals are in a row, then when we're doing the answer, we just put a decimal point in the answer in the exact same spot in the line. Once we've lined them all up, we just add and subtract like normal. The only thing is we've got to add in missing zeros and I'll show you that in a moment. Let's practice adding decimals. Here I have 8.31 plus 5.93. So I'm going to write out my question and I'm going to line up my decimals. I like to write it kind of in the center of my page, 8.31, which gives, just gives me space around either side. Now I've got 5.93. So I'm going to put that decimal place there and I've got a 9.3 afterwards and I've got a 5 above. And I need to say what operation I'm doing, which is an addition. Draw a line. Once I have it written out, I add like normal. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 9 is 12. 2 carry the 1. Now the next thing I've hit is the decimal, so I'm going to put a decimal. Now I continue. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 5 is 14. 4, nothing to carry the 1. There we go. 14.24. Now as always, I like to check is it reasonable? What is 8 plus 5? That's 13. This is just around the number 13. If my answer had been 140, two, then I would have known it was unreasonable, but this seems pretty reasonable. B, let's write out our problem. I'm going to write in the middle of the page 64.8. Then I'm going to put that decimal place and I'm going to go on 0, 1, 2, and it's a 3. Another decimal place, 9, 4, and it's a 5. And I'm doing addition. Now here's one of those times when we have to add in missing zeros. There's a lot of gaps here behind the 8 and behind the 4. But I know from invisible math that after the decimal, zeros go on for infinity. So I always like to put them in there so that I know when I'm adding what I'm working with. So here we go. I'm going to add in the zero, add the zero, add the zero. Now I'm full. I can draw my line. Now I can add. Zero plus two plus zero is two. One plus four is five. Eight plus nine is 17. Seven carry the one. I've got decimal points. So I'm putting a decimal point. One plus four is five. Plus another 5 is 10, plus 3, 13, 3 carry the 1, 1 plus 6 is 7, 73. Let's check, is it reasonable? Well, I've got 63 plus 4 would be 67, plus 5 would be 72, this is about 73, so that's perfect. You try, add some decimals. Let's quickly check these answers. I've taken A and I've written it out with my decimal points in a line. Now that they're in a line, I just add. 2 plus 5 is 7. 5 plus 8, 13, 3, carry the 1. Next is the decimal point, pop it in. 1 plus 2, 3 plus 3 is 6, 1 plus 2 is 3. Let's check how reasonable it is. 12 plus 23, that's 35, reasonable. B, I've written it out, it's in a line, but I'm missing some zeros. 
So I'm going to write my zeros in there. Now, 0 plus 0 plus 2 is 2. 8 plus 0 plus 5, that's 13. 1 plus 9 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. 3 carry the 1. I've reached a decimal point. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus another 5 is 10. Plus a 2 is 12. Is that reasonable? 4 plus 5 is 9. Plus 2 is 11. Perfect. Let's look at subtracting decimals. As you guessed it, subtracting decimals follows the exact same procedure. So I'm going to write A and I'm going to write it out. 5.83. And then I'm going to put my decimal point in a line and write it out on either side and put in my operation, which is subtraction and a line. Once they're lined up, then I'm just doing the exact same thing that I would normally do for a subtraction. So 3 take away 2 is 1. 8 take away 1 is 7. Now I've hit a decimal point, so I'm putting in a point. And 5 take 3 is 2, so I've got 2.71. I'm going to check how reasonable it is. 5 take 3 is 2, and this is just bigger than 2, so that's perfect. B. I'm going to write it out again. I've got 146.35, and I'm taking away 79.5. Put in my operation. Now I've got an empty spot behind the decimal, so I'm going to fill that in with a zero. It is really important to fill that in because otherwise we can sometimes get confused with the lines that we're following. So it is really important step. Now that it's full, I can subtract like normal. 5 take away 3 is 5. 3 take away 5 we can't do because 3 is smaller than 5. So we're going to borrow from the person next door. This time it's the 1s. So I cross out the 6, it becomes a 5. And I put a 1 next to the 3. Now it's 13 take 5. 13 take 5 is 8. Now we've hit a decimal point, put it in. 5 take 9, can't do. So 4 becomes a 3, 5 becomes a 15. 15 take away 9 is 6. 3 take away 7, can't do. Borrow 13 take away 7 is 6. And then there's nothing left there. So 66.85 is my estimated answer. Now for this one, for my reasonableness, I don't actually want to calculate 140. 46 take away 79, it's too much in my head. So I'm just going to round to 150 take away 80. And 150 take away 80 would be 70. And this is just smaller than 70. So this seems about right. Remember, our reasonableness check is just so we can make sure that we haven't put the decimal place in the wrong position. And if we've done that, it's going to be very different. So it will be 668, which wouldn't be close to 70. So that's what we're doing with our reasonable check. You try subtract some decimals. Let's quickly check our answers. So A, I've written it out and I've put them in line. So now I can subtract like normal. 8 take away 6 is 2. 4 take away 1 is 3. There's the decimal point, so I put it in. 9 take away 4 is 5. Check the reasonableness. 9 take 4 is 5. That seems great. For B, I've got a missing spot here, so I'm going to fill in the 0. 4 take away 0 is 4. 9 take away 1 is 8. 2 take away 4 we can't do because... 4 is bigger than 2, so we're going to borrow. That becomes a 1, that becomes a 12. 12 take away 4 is 8, and I've hit the decimal point, so I'm putting that in. 1 take 5 we can't do, so I borrow this one, and that is 11 take 5, which is 6. And then there's nothing else left. Check the reasonableness. 12 take away 5 is 7. This is approximately 7, so my answer is 6.884. I hope now you can see that when we add and subtract decimals, it follows the exact same procedure as normal, as long as we line up those decimals and fill in any extra zeros. So I hope now you know how to add and subtract decimals.